Steve White, it is a pleasure to be able to speak with you today. Thanks so much for joining us uh, for the conversation, joining us on the podcast. Thank you for having me. Um, it's an honor to share this time with you. I, I appreciate it. And uh, that's just a reflection. I'm, I'm right there with you. Absolutely. <laughs> so, I mean, just in a little bit that we've talked uh, kind of before we jumped on, I think uh, we've got a, a, a treasure trove of, of things that we can share. Mm -hmm. um, but in order to get there, I'd love it if you could share a little bit of, about your journey. You know, it doesn't need to be you know, super in the, in the weeds, but you know, what brought you to where you are now in life? What brought you to your current uh, expression and what you're helping to mm -hmm. birth into the world? And then also, if you could just give people a little bit of insight around uh, your book and even the book series uh, around mm -hmm. around the concept of, of crown or owning your crown or finding your crown. Mm. Um, so I say my journey um, has been colorful, which is quite the opposite <laughs> of my whole, whole brand being monochrome. Um, I never, ever planned to be doing the work that I'm doing today. Um, I was actually working in accounts and I went to, I remember this particular morning, I was feeling so ill. And um, when you're younger, <laughs> you can just push yourself through things. And so my lifestyle at the time wasn't very um, healthy. I worked a lot of hours. I worked multiple jobs, um, and there was no balance. Um, and yeah, I just remember feeling really unwell that day. And I went to work, and I was just like so bunged up. And I remember getting to the office and feeling like I needed some type of respiratory relief, mm. you know. And um, I went to the kitchen area, and I kind of poured this menthol solution into like hot water and sat with it under my desk, um, under my, my, my neck and mm -hmm. just inhaled as I was typing away and crunching numbers. <laughs> um, the next thing I realized or remember is I woke up in the hospital. Oh my and, gosh. Um, yeah, I, it was later revealed that I had a seizure. Wow. And um, yeah, they found me in the bathroom. So, yeah, I would say that was the the significant change. Yeah, <laughs> I kind of I lost all my independence, couldn't really be alone, um, and I just felt so miserable. I felt mm. so miserable, and it was around the time social media just started. You know, uh, MySpace was still there; mm -hmm. it was coming to an end. And then Facebook just started. And I recall just going online one day and posting the words, I wish you better days. Um, I don't know where it came from. <laughs> yeah. um, I just felt compelled to write it. And then <clears throat> I did the same thing the next day. And the next day. And every day for a year. The same message. Same message at the same Beautiful. time every day and it started to like really pick up like people expected it and it was just like a nice affirmation and um gradually over time they evolved into other people's quotes mm -hmm. from self-help books and then my own quotes and they were just simple things yeah. like i hope you find some peace today i hope something good happens for you today and then they evolved into like paragraphs, then blogs. And then I had a Facebook group called 100 Million Positive People. And it was my goal to get 100 million people in there. Um, and then I started receiving emails from people. So I set up this little website, people asking me for advice. And meanwhile, I'm in bed. <laughs> Like it's still, it's, I mean, would you say you were in recovery or you're still kind no, of no, no. figuring out I, like yeah, you know, what's going having, on with you? I Sorry, I forgot to say, I continued to have seizures every okay. week, sometimes multiple in a week. Wow. So I couldn't work yeah. um, um, so much that I was afraid to leave the house. I was afraid to go to the bathroom. Just they were unpredictable. Yeah. Um, and so I just kept posting and posting. And my thing was I just didn't want anyone to feel what I was feeling. Yeah. And so 
you know, you journey on. I was later on to diagnose with epilepsy. Um, and life continues to happen. And it just evolved. And you start attracting like-minded people. That opened up opportunities for me to do certain courses in life coaching. Later on, going back to uni and doing counseling psychology. Um, and this kind of became my world, this kind of self-improvement world. And I became one of those toxic positivity people <laughs> you know i did and it was working really well for me mm -hmm. um everyone who knew me knew me as the positive person the, the resilient one and um yeah it was masking a lot of things that i wasn't yet ready to face yeah um and then i would say you know it really took off um and sorry i was getting a lot of emails and um one of the people who I had, you know, connected with in that time. I, he was established in America. And I said to him, how do you deal with all the emails? Mm. And he said, what emails? And I said, I'm getting about 300 emails a day, people asking for advice. Yeah. And he was like, what are you doing? And I said, I'm replying to all of them. And he said, you can't do that. You know, maybe you should, you know, think about writing a book. Yeah. And so I went back online and I copy and pasted everything I'd ever written and shared. And that became my first book in 2010. Beautiful. And that was called Align Yourself. Um, and then three months later, I put out another one. And it was called The Presence Driven Life. Mm -hmm. And then three months later, I put out another one. And it was called Above and Beyond. And then I compiled all three books into one and called it Better Days. Beautiful. And then from there, the Better Days brand was born. Um, it evolved over the years into a magazine, a blog, charity. Um, and yeah, that was the start. Yeah. That was the start. And where was your health in that time period of real prolific, maybe not production, because you've been producing the entire time and then it was more of a consolidation. But in, as you were publishing those first three, where were you at as far as your own health and your own you know, kind of coming back to center and finding yourself in that in that space i was hiding mm. yeah i wasn't well yeah um but my thing was if i can put the focus on other people then it doesn't matter about what i'm feeling it's mm. not about me it's yeah. about this thing that's just come into my heart all of a sudden and i yeah. now feel i have to serve i have to give yeah and yeah, that became my life. And um, I can't, should I continue the story? <laughs> well, I, I love I love where we're going because now yeah. it sounds like when we if we turn the page or get to the next chapter, mm -hmm. coming from that place of you know no bad days, only you know positive mm -hmm. vibes, only good ways of thinking, you know, and, and I feel like that's functional for a time, like a lot mm -hmm. of things, a lot of things that we use to either um, you know self medicate, self soothe self-regulate mm. it works until it doesn't work mm. so was there a point where it stopped working and you really had to kind of turn towards some of the things that 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 were you know under the under the covers or you know locked away in a cupboard that we didn't want to look at and then yeah. be able to, to move through those yeah so my life has been very um what's the word <laughs> it's been very um, balanced mm. in that a lot of good things happened in my life mm -hmm. um, but at the same time a lot of very painful things happen yeah. and so neither gets the attention that they deserve yeah so I found it hard at that time to deal with some of the traumas and some of the emotions that I was experiencing because I was winning Mm -hmm. And I should be excited about this project and I should mm. be, you know, the most confident person in the world because everyone tells me I'm inspiring. Mm -hmm. But meanwhile, there's this other side to me that feels the opposite and neither can get the credit. You know, I can never be sad mm. <laughs> because I'm expected to be <laughs> the positive one. Mm -hmm. And then I can never really, you know, really truly enjoy myself because. I know this sadness that I don't want to, in a sense, disregard or treat as though it's not there. And so yeah. 
the ch- the the point for me was 2014. Um, my wife and I we lost the baby, mm-hmm. um, but this was at a time where things were going really well for me, mm-hmm. and so I continued to work and continued to push through. And I, I was actually doing a tour, and I was in I was in the states, um, and on return 2015, I just crashed. Everything mm-hmm. just hit me. Um, I just didn't want to be here anymore. Yeah. And it was at that point where I realized I needed to start to address some of those things and that positivity and thinking positivity was not going to reach those places yeah. too, too deep. Yeah. And so I deleted everything. I came wow. offline and I had one question for myself. And the question was, who am I? <laughs> Literally one of the most powerful questions we can just let sit Mm. and not need to answer immediately. And there was only one way I was going to find the answer out. And that was to delete everything that had already defined me. Mm. And so I wanted to make sure that I was doing the work because I genuinely love to serve and feel that's my purpose. And that it hadn't become an ego thing. Mm. There's no way to test that in the battlefield so i had to step outside of it yeah and so when i deleted that i was no longer i no longer had a bio you know so i didn't have any demands i didn't have any schedules any emails any mailing list Mm -hmm. and there were no demands from me outside of my family and so i started to learn myself i learned that i like gardening i learned that i like painting um i learned that i didn't particularly like the diet that i was brought up eating you know I learned that I didn't like the way I looked, mm. you know, and I wanted to change my hair and grow it. And I, I, I was getting closer to myself when I stepped away from being who I had to be for everybody else. And um, so I did that journey. And then, um, so yeah, at that point, my, my final book was called The Suicide Note. Mm. Um, and that was before, just before my breakdown. Um, and then I stepped away. And then I said I was done with writing. Um, do you want to do anything else? And then yeah. I said if I did come back to write, it'd be for something special. Um, and in 2018, my son was born. Beautiful. And, um, yeah, he had a stroke at birth, and it meant that he has mental difficulties. Um, mm. He's got cerebral palsy. Mm. And so I thought it was a perfect time to come back out and write again. And that's where Crown was born. Beautiful. Yeah, and then so you've been, you've kind of reemerged, mm. if you will, since since 2018 or so. Yeah, uh, you know, almost a, a, I won't say a reinvention, but a reinvigoration, like a, mm. a re recommitment, re reconnection with yourself. Mm. And I, I wanna I wanna emphasize uh, one. I mean, everything there was absolutely beautiful, and. And I really hope people take the time to listen to everything that Steve just shared, because there is a wealth of treasure that we can take with us on our own journeys. And I think the biggest thing is one of the things that stood out to me most was, you know, the like, let's call them the highs and the lows or the, mm. the, the, the pleasure and the pain. We never really give either its due. Because a lot of times when we hit the high, It's almost like we're in a casino. It's like, yeah, that was great. When's the next one? Mm -hmm. Or if we're addressing a low, we try to avoid it. We try to escape it. We try to, you know, it's it's not there. It's not there. I don't need to look at it. Mm -hmm. But then it's it's either we're not getting that same uh, high that we did before from the successes or from, you know, the, the, the blips on the radar that are positive. And we're trying to run away at the same time on the inside from these, you know, more things that we don't want to look at. And it really ends up, I feel like it phrases at the edge. It pulls us apart from who we are. And I love what you shared about the different seasons that we can experience in life. Mm -hmm. And I feel like our seasons aren't quite as delineated or predictable as the four seasons in a year, because in, in your sharing, some of your seasons took more years. Than, than, mm. than not. And others, there were shorter periods of time. So what was it as you were asking this question and unpacking and getting behind, who am I? Mm. What was it that helped you bring yourself back to that place of that 
personal power and more of what I like to call peaceful presence, non-attachment, being in the observer mm-hmm. state, to be able to embrace the highs and really embrace the lows as well as we're, as we're navigating through this, this entangled web of life that we're all in. I think it's perspective. I think when you're young, you think you know everything. <laughs> oh, and, you, you did that too? <laughs> yeah. You think you know everything. And especially if you are already doing things that most people your age haven't done mm. or are not doing, you can feel as though you are an anomaly and that you are mm, that you are somehow the exception that those things cannot bother you or mm-hmm. affect you and i think as you 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 grow older you have more life to look back on and you have more data you have more mm-hmm. reference points and so you can you have more to work with in terms of how to analyze your life to you, you you know when things are off because you've you've had a lot of times in your life where things have felt off and so you yeah. can see the patterns i think when you're young you're not aware or not as aware of patterns because you haven't lived for very long yeah and so i've noticed significant patterns in my life a loop and mm-hmm. um i i think the 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 main thing that I learned in that time is that you only have the perspective that you have at the stage that you're at. And so trying to be in the present and remain here. I think when I was younger, I felt I was in the future because I was ahead of my peers, Mm -hmm. but then I was always looking forward. What's the next thing? How can I win? How can Mm -hmm. I be better? How can I improve? How can I have more? As I got older, it was the complete opposite. It was, how can I do less? (laughs) How can I have less and be more content? And so I think what those, those four years taught me is that I didn't need social media. I didn't need to be popular. Mm-hmm. I didn't need to be told I'm the inspirational one. I didn't need the retweets or the likes or the followers or the shares yeah. because I went four years without it. And during those four years, my my environment validated me. Yeah. And so by stripping things away, becoming more of a minimalist, mm-hmm. I was able to appreciate the things that remained. And yeah. that was the true value that I I feel I unpacked by starting to just strip things away um, that I, it was not possible for me to see in my younger years. Of course. Mm. I, I remember, you know, I think through teenage into my twenties and I'm, I'm just reflecting you know, as I'm, I'm, I'm reflecting internally as, as you're sharing, mm. it felt like it was almost like maybe being caught in a dust storm mm. where there's so much going on to your point. We don't necessarily have, the space. We're not necessarily seeking that space for self-reflection, self-awareness, because mm-hmm. there's a lot of exploration going on. There's still a lot of, you know, a lot of newness to your point. Mm-hmm. And so I think with that perspective, one thing I like to say is if it isn't enough now, it's not going to be enough when or then either. Mm-hmm. And I think it's such a powerful exercise, really holding up that mirror to ourselves and asking the question without an expectation of an immediate answer, because it's there, we're, we're too multidimensional for a simple answer mm-hmm. behind who am I? But getting to that place of, you know, like a Marie Kondo with a, like clearing the space, like, does this spark mm-hmm. joy? Does this thought spark joy? Does this thing I'm doing, does this fulfill, is this something that I want to keep continuing in my life? Mm-hmm. Or is it just something I've habituated because that's how that's what I was introduced to, and that's the way my parents did it, my friends did it, my community did it at the time. So I feel like it does take a certain amount of. There was some, you know, it's it, there, we need to have a spark. You mentioned, um, you know, when you were when you started to just be on your consistent, diligent sharing that first year. Mm. From what you shared, it sounded like you had the spark in even in this kind of like you know debilitated mm. condition that you were experiencing this this the season that you were in yeah so for those that are you know maybe not in that place of uh, even entertaining the thought like i can do it 
we're still on that and i don't know this is kind of gnarly what are some things that you've seen uh, from your work and your travels that can help us connect with our own spark can can get that little that little bit of kindling going that we can then turn into a real generator for us to be able to be of service more in life mm, i think it's that's a great question um and I think for me, I always knew that I was going to do something of service, mm. but I didn't know the medium. I didn't know how. I always thought I have to get successful first. And when I've got enough <laughs> money, then I can help people. Yeah. So that was my goal. I didn't know that it was going to be the complete opposite. I'd lose everything, lose my independence, lose the thing that I thought would get me the wealth mm. and that I would make the wealth through the brokenness and then that would be the thing that helps people and so i think sometimes it's not about having just like a strategy or someone like me tell you this is what you need to do i think it's more um creating an environment within your life that brings you the closest to yourself and what you are called to do will flow out of you organically, as opposed to saying, I want to be an author because he's an author. Yeah. I, I didn't, I could never have foreseen this because I didn't have the skills that I have today back then. Right. I didn't have the interest that I have today back then. I didn't even like to read okay back then. So I never could have predicted this. So imagine someone yeah. told me then, hey, you know, um, well, I was listening to a podcast and someone asked the same question that you mm. just asked. And the person, the guest said, you just got to go for it. Just start writing. Mm. You know, I wouldn't have done it because that was not my interest. Right. However, life navigated me in a way into that in interest. And so I would say the key things or the skills I'd say that's required for anything is being consistent, mm -hmm. um, attention to detail. And I would say the last thing that's really helped me is studying. You know, mm. I, I, I work on my craft every single day. Yeah. I'm, I, I write every single day. I wake up before everybody every single day. I, whether I have a book coming out or not, I work on my craft. Yeah. And I think that first, I wish you better days every single day. That was the beginning. It was something very small. It didn't start off with me writing three hours a day. Right. It was something very small. So um, in short, I would say to anyone listening, if you have something in your heart or you feel there's something you want to do, find the smallest way you can possibly do it, even if it's in private, and just have some consistency until it becomes a habit and then build on it bit by bit and then create an environment that um, can hold that thing that's healthy for that thing that helps that thing to grow and over time it will be whatever it's supposed to be that's, and i i feel like that's universally applicable mm. and uh, when steve's talking about environment i'm thinking the internal and external environment so mm. it, it, it's you know it's it's a it, we're all i feel like we're always in co-creation and we're in co-creation with our environment internally and externally. We're in co-creation with our family and our and our in our connections. We're in co-creation with the world at large. And I think it's so valuable to take that one step. And one thing I like to share is, I mean, that can be standing up and sitting down from a chair ten times. Mm -hmm. That can be going for a walk around the block until I can do it without feeling out of breath. It can be sitting down with a blank piece of paper in front of you and just start writing. Even if it's, I don't know what to say right now, just start mm -hmm. writing that and then see what comes. And then along with that, I, I'm very, my, my focus and my, my fascination is the, the internal environment, that our, our terrain. Mm -hmm. And so what I like to share is uh, in order to kind of help with the, the doing of the openness, which I would say would be, you know, clean up your environment one small thing at a time. But releasing the attachment to the outcome, mm. I feel, is a really powerful 
value add that we can add to that equation where we might have an idea of where we want to go. Yeah. But I'm not attached to how I'm going to get there and I'm not attached to when I'm going to get there. Mm. Because when we're building a powerful and strong foundation, that isn't always overnight. Sometimes it can be. In my experience, it's not that often though. Mm. So, you know, consistency, showing up for yourself, have an, have an idea of where you're going, but not needing to define every step, allowing for that openness and mm. we can call it universe inspiration, wisdom, inner knowing to come in. And then another thing that has been really powerful that I feel like is, is part of that equation is staying a little more open and curious as opposed to thinking we know mm. and asking why to your point, you know, it's like, Oh, somebody comes to me and they wanted to be an author. Well, why? Mm. And really like hold ourselves to task with that. Why? And don't let ourselves off yeah. the hook with just the first answer. Keep mm. taking those steps to really get to that core root of the why find that, find that essence, find that spark. Mm. And then I feel like once we're kind of like got all of these aspects in play that's when things start to really get expansive and dynamic yeah and just to add something to that point um the why i'm someone who likes to understand things mm -hmm. but i'm also aware that there are some things that i am not supposed to understand okay. um i think sometimes as humans we think that our minds um are I think we think well, they're better than they are. <laughs> you know, just, that if we don't understand it, then it's either not true, you know, it's um, not important, mm -hmm. or we create these meanings, but it's just some things are beyond the words that you've been taught in school. You know, some 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 descriptions and some reasons behind things are beyond your vocabulary. You know, you only know what you know. And so if we're trying to use the human mind that is just programmed from a system or a book to understand something that's bigger than mm -hmm. the person who created that system and book, um, we can end up asking questions that we will not find the answers to in our mind. And I think I, I, I learned that quite early on, um, that there were just some questions that I wouldn't be able to have the answer to here now mm. and so i am the meticulous planner i do like every single puzzle piece and every step <laughs> however i'm not attached as you said i'm not attached to those steps i just like to have them to minimize room for error yeah um so that with being consistent showing up attention to detail um and not always having to know the outcome um, I think that those are the main things that have kind of really sustained me, you know, the, the old me, mm -hmm. and then coming back as the new me, I was able to be, keep those same characteristics. And in a sense, the formula works, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's about um, consistency. I think that would be the most important thing. Um, and yeah, that, I think that's where people struggle. It's that they quit yeah. or they give themselves reason to not continue the thing that they said they're passionate about. And the love, this thing that I'm talking about is love for me, that spark where you, you described it. It's love. That thing that I felt when I wrote, I wish you better days. It was love. I wanted yeah. to give love to someone. I wanted them to feel well and yeah. feel strong and worthy and loved and cared for um and the desire that i had to share that was bigger than anything that i was going through in my life yeah. anything that i would go through in my life um and anything anyone else could expect of me or or thought i should be doing or shouldn't be doing and <laughs> oh you should post your photos in color you know yeah you, you should you know you should you should sell ebooks you should yeah <laughs> but i know what my mission is and i'm 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 committed to it and so yeah. i think the more you build those muscles and habits of consistency and detach from the outcome as you've said i think there is where you um can start to feel a bit more free in your creation or whatever field you've chosen to do yeah. and when you feel free um 
I think it's in that place where you get the answer. Who are you? Yeah. I love that. Because it really is about, and it's an internal freedom. If we can really get to that place of freedom internally, mm. then that's something that it's not bestowed by any government or any you know body of, of anything outside of ourselves. That is a sovereign right, a divine right, that I believe is, mm. is for all of us. And for, for me, getting to that love, getting to that, that place of openness and consistency and just doing, or did, nope, mm. I'm just taking one step. I'm just going to do it. Mm. Um, that is, you know, there, there's, some, there's some navigation there, but it's something that's available to all of us. And I think that self-inquiry is probably, like you said, self-inquiry, consistency, showing up, releasing attachment to the outcome. I feel like there is a little bit of like a trust fall factor to it as well. Mm. where it's like, listen, I have, and this is something I experienced. So I was a designer to, to your point about, I, I wasn't looking for any of this. <laughs> I was a, a designer happy with, uh, I was working in user interface, user experience and happened to be Kelly and my wife, Kelly and I happened to be working with ourselves and each other and moving mm. through our stuff and unpacking it. And I was just feeling better and better. Um, but then when it happened, when, when everything shifted, it was a very, it was just, oh yeah, this is what I'm doing now. Because I had been kind of unpacking and you know, disentangling myself from others' opinions or intentions or thoughts or whatever. And just coming back to that, you know, that consistent, consistently letting that question percolate, who am I? Mm. And allowing answers to come through. And sometimes they're different answers. They're not always going to be the same because I feel like we are, you know, to your, to your point, we are multifaceted. We are multidimensional. So mm. it's, it's more like, uh, I feel like we can think of ourselves maybe as a prism or almost a disco ball where there's multiple, multiple facets and there's more, um, you know, if you, if you're familiar with the term uh, gestalt, I learned it from, from design school, mm. uh, but the, sum of the parts or the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. Sum of the parts. Yeah. So we, you know, we, we are having a human experience and we are also mm. spiritual, energetic, emotional beings mm. um, from my own experience and from uh, research that's been done and, you know, things that have been you know, experiments with the CIA, we are coming to an understanding that our consciousness is non-local. It's not just, you know, mm. it's not just trapped within the, the, mm. the structures of the brain. Mm. Um, and it can be a little, it can be a little freaky once we start getting to these places of openness and we start asking questions without a need to have an answer. And then all of a sudden we hear an answer, we feel an answer, we get a knowing. Mm. And then having that freedom internally to then act on that intuition or that, that inner knowing. Mm. It's not something that we're taught or trained to do. So it can feel scary. It can feel intimidating. Um, and also recognizing that we are, I think we are a yes and as opposed to an either or, mm. which gets me to that place of, you know, playing in the spectrum of gray. There is no black mm. and white. There is no right mm. or wrong necessarily. Mm. It's all perspe perspective, perception, mm -hmm. what we're carrying with us. Mm. So what, what you shared about getting that space to create, I like to call that the sandbox of life where okay. we are in this kind of creator space and we're working with raw materials and sometimes you know, we build something up and it's like, oh, it's not quite what I thought it was. So it's okay that we let it dissolve and mm. let it fade away so we can build something new. So what are some ways that you've embraced your, your own multifaceted nature of, mm. you know, a lot of the labels and roles that we play in life, but also this more bigger sense of self beyond who am I? Mm. So I remember at a time, um, I've always been victim mm. of, doing too much mm. <laughs> what tends to happen is because I can I had to learn a lot of things I had to learn a lot of skills I had mm. to I didn't have a big budget and so I had to learn how to use a camera and I had to learn how to edit and I had to learn how to do photography and how to do graphic design and how to build websites and I had to do all these things for myself uh, almost like the test dummy and slowly get better and refine and look at someone else's website and say okay if I do that then mine will look more professional and I slowly just refine these skills until I became very good at a lot of things and so now I'm still in that space of 
not being able to know if I'm doing it because I can or if I'm doing it because I want to, right? And so, but one day I was very confused about my next step. And I spoke to a friend and he asked me a question and he said, um, if money wasn't an object and your family were taken care of, what's the one thing that you would do for the rest of your life? And I thought about it and the answer was right. Mm. And he said, I think that's what you should do then. And um, yeah, I think that was a really good way. You know, if you give yourself that type of ultimatum, like what would you choose? Um, because, you know, a lot of the motivations are then stripped away. If you take yeah. away finance or whatever people do things for, what would you actually do with your time? Um, if it was the last day of your life, what, what would you do? And so once you have that answer, the next question should probably be, why am I not doing it? Mm. You know, or how could I begin to do more of it? And so I'd say that was probably the thing for me. It was, okay, I, it's what you're called to do mm -hmm. and then what you're skilled to do. And so the point for here is once I started studying psychology, the big question, how much of this is nature versus nurture? Mm -hmm. And I realized that for most of us, a lot of our, our personalities and uh, behaviors and even our view on life for ourselves and others is based on nurture. Mm -hmm. It's it's based on our experiences or things, the deep programming that we've been taught. And my goal during that time was to get closer to my nature. Yeah. And so in order to do that, I had to step away from um, a lot of things, a lot of people, and begin to really pay attention to my habits and seeing how they were changing. Yeah. Um, and then after my getting closer to my nature, Okay, some of the things I learned about my nature. Mm. I like to help people. Yeah. Um, I like to make people feel good. Um, I like um, I like being calm. Mm. I like calm environments. <laughs> These are things that sometimes you don't know if you're in the wrong environment. You don't know that you like calm or you don't know that you like helping people. Yeah. You, you just until you take yourself out of it and and so now it was like okay i want to learn my super nature yeah okay um so my super nature is all these skills i've acquired how can i now use them to do the more of those things how can i share more love more calm how can i how can i excel in those skills things using all of these skills that i've built up yeah. so not using the, the the skill as a career path so i'm not a cinematographer right. no i'm not a graphic designer no, i'm an author but this is how i present my work and i can use these tools without taking those titles yeah and i think that's a way you can use the nurture to support the nature to tap into your super nature 100%. And that's and that's basically the journey I went on, but that's still up and down, you know. And that's oh, not yeah. up down all around. Yeah, and as you as you mentioned, I I call that space the gray, mm. um, because um, I started this conversation off saying I was very self help. I don't have anything against self help and positivity and the law of attraction, mm -hmm. and self-help books. However, it's half of the picture. Yeah, A lot of it is mind. There's another part to it, feelings. And that's where my message, it was very powerful, and it was very inspirational and motivational, and it helped a lot of people, but it was incomplete. There was a whole yeah. population who couldn't think what I was writing. Couldn't because even connect with the material. They couldn't even connect with it because the place that they need to be spoken to is the feeling. Yeah. And so that's where Crown comes and it now romanticizes trauma, if mm. you want to put it that way. Um, you know, I, I call it a haunting dystopian beauty. And it's it's gonna make 
the, the, t- the tough conversations and the tough emotions palatable. It makes it poetic. It makes yeah. it beautiful. And I'm, that's the key. You know, I don't want people to think to be successful or to be a high achiever, you just got to be the most, the happiest person or the most confident person. And you've got to write the, the most empowering caption under your photo to appear to be doing well. No, the mm. most successful person is the one who can say, I'm not doing well, and that's okay, you know? And that's what I had to learn, and that's really what Crown did. It was it gave people permission to feel, you know, mm. and it was a safe space to do so. And it was, now we have a complete message to size, the self-help, the mental, the emotional, the spiritual, and you put them together and we live in the spectrum of both, Mm -hmm. you know, and that's the gray area. And so, yeah. And what I'm hearing is you've been employing a lot of work or practices or awareness around acceptance and honesty. Mm. Cause if we're, and a lot of times we're not honest with ourselves out of a survival need, we, you know, our, our, our needs aren't being met. And so, you know, we pump ourselves up or we, you know, we, we bluster and we peacock or, you know, we do things that maybe aren't really fully aligned, mm. but a lot of times we feel like, well, we don't have any other choice. I, I, this is my only option. And really like in the gray, there is no only option. Like all possibilities exist if we're mm. open to them. Yeah. And you, yeah. you nailed something that is so important and it's a subtle shift, but it is a monumental shift because a lot of times if we're feeling stuck or we're feeling separate from ourselves and the way separation from self expresses is really isolation and separation from others, we feel alienated. Mm-hmm. And when we're in that place, I feel a lot of the questions we ask are, can I, like, mm-hmm. can I ever get out of this? Can anything ever be different than what I'm experiencing right now? Mm-hmm. And it's a binary question. There's only two possible answers. It's either a yes or a no. Mm. But when you added how in front mm. of the can, mm. that gives our system space to work on a more dynamic question. Mm. And I like to say, if we don't give our, our mind-body system something to chew on or maybe a problem to solve or even a thought to entertain, mm. it's going to do it for us. It's going to find something to be hypervigilant about mm. or to keep us, you know, in this kind of safety bubble, instead of getting into that more, a little bit less defined, a little bit more possibility space of Mm. asking these questions. How can I, who am I? Mm. And it can be a little bit, it can be a little disconcerting. It maybe feel, it can feel a little intimidating or, or unsteady, but there can be really amazing power in embracing that perceptive unsteadiness. One thing I like to say is um, it's important to get comfortable in the free fall. Mm. So I don't know if you've ever been skydiving. I haven't, but that's on my bucket list actually. <laughs> I, 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 I did a tandem and I highly recommend it because mm. you, you kind of get the, the awesomeness of it without mm. all of the responsibility of you know getting back safely, safely to the ground. I'm trusting my partner for that. Mm. And so, uh, so I went skydiving and there's a split second when you leave the plane where you do feel like you're falling, like a fraction of a second. And then that passes. And all of a sudden, even though you're falling, it feels like you're flying. Mm. And so when we can get more comfortable in the free fall, yeah, it can be scary. That, mm. that initial drop, that, that initial commitment to doing something different or taking a different path or thinking a different thought, but stepping into that place of you know, bravery, freedom, um, whatever we want to call it. That is the, you know, that's the ether. That's the, that's the alchemy for answering those questions for ourselves. And to your point, I don't feel anyone but us can answer those questions. Mm. And to some extent, the answers are all going to be very hyper-personal. They're all going to be really specific to us. So there is that aspect of self-resilience. I I like to say self-dedication too. I'm dedicated to my self-expansion self-awareness yeah. self-development mm. so when we're in that gray zone when we find ourselves there which <laughs> we're all there whether we admit it or not yeah <laughs> sometimes we keep things you know black and white yes or no for out of out of a necessity for safety or you know whatever it is for us but 
what are some things that you recommend or that you've done to find more, maybe more lightness, more, more, more play, even though we are in these kind of more sensitive mm. areas? I think it's quite interesting. Um, whenever I, I say the gray area or the gray zone, as we've said it here today, and or if I speak about it, um, people like the color black it has a negative connotation, the gray. You assume that it's a miserable, horrible place. But if it's a combination of light and dark, as is everything in our world, then I don't think, in my opinion, I don't think there should be this quest to escape the gray. Mm to try to get to one of these extremes, you know? Um, there's a quote, I think it's in Crown 1, um, Crown 2, there's a character called Shadow. And um, what's beautiful about Shadow is, oh, he gives a beautiful speech. And I want to paraphrase it, but he says, I've been with you for your whole life. Um, to see me is to see you. To love me is to love you. Um, you cannot outrun me. I'm always with you. Even when it appears I'm ahead of you, you know, and, and it's just so beautiful. And it's just this kind of like, you cannot escape your own shadow, nor should you try to. Yeah. And then he, he says to, to, to harm you is to harm, to harm me is to harm yourself. To hurt me is to hurt yourself. And so sometimes the shadows in our lives, we, we, we harm ourselves by trying to force ourselves into this light. And I don't know mm. what this light is that everyone <laughs> speaks of <laughs> because, you know, shadows tell you what you cannot see, right? Yeah. There's something in the way of the light. See now if I can create a shadow, okay? Mm -hmm. My hand is blocking the light. But if you can see the shape of my hand, it, it's the shadow that you're seeing. So the light isn't showing you the, my hand. It's the shadow that's showing you my hand. Yeah. And so to escape the shadow is to, to live in a space where you cannot see the truth. You know, you're not seeing the full truth you're yeah. seeing just the light or if you're just someone who likes darkness you're just seeing dark yeah. but the gray um for me isn't a miserable place or a sad place so i, I wouldn't advise anybody to escape the gray because <laughs> i believe the world is highlights and shadows and there's a balance and um now if you ask me what do i do when i'm in a difficult time How, some of the ways to navigate into a brighter space of course there are things um me personally I, I had this conversation earlier um it's an environment thing mm. i like to surround myself with things that make me feel good when i can see life around me it makes me feel more alive when i when i feel more zen and i feel warm it makes me feel alive when I feel cold mm. and uneasy and anxious, it makes me feel dead. <laughs> you know, it makes yeah, me like a, feel numb and, yeah. and you know, there, there is no flow. I like flow. Um, so, yeah, my answer, the old me would have said, <laughs> hey, yeah, just think positive. Right. You know, but the new me is, no, I'm going to sit with my emotions. Yeah. I'm going to be vulnerable. I'm going to learn. What are you trying to teach me? You know, I'm yeah. going to pray. I'm going to meditate. I'm going to, um, I'm going to have times where I don't want to speak. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have times where I just want to cry. I'm going to have times where I want to laugh. And so that's my way of navigating. Um, I haven't always chosen the healthiest way. Sometimes I just sure. work, work, work. I distract yeah. myself. Yeah. But more recently I've been um, sitting with my emotions and, letting them pass and um, just continuing to 
take my next step with the new knowledge. Yeah. I think there's another quote in Crown that says, remember in darkness what you learned in the light. So some of us get through these seasons, these storms, these wildernesses, and and we're just happy to be out of it. And then we go into another storm, but we haven't applied any of the lessons that we've learned from the previous time. We do the same thing again. and <laughs> I Expect I a different outcome. Yeah, insanity. And so I, I'm very aware now of the patterns that mm. I create, but also some of the patterns that I fall into Mm -hmm. um, and then I always try to change something each time. Yeah. So being self-aware, as you said, and um, mm -hmm. making small, manageable changes that could influence a different outcome potentially the next time. Yeah, the recognition, the mm -hmm. recognition of a pattern or the awareness. Accountability. Yeah. You know, being accountable to yourself. Yeah. Um, if you say you want to do better, then you don't have to accomplish that now, but just doing a small step yeah. that may seem insignificant to anyone else in the world. But to me, that was all I could do. Yeah. Do another one tomorrow. Yeah. And yeah, that's really been my method. Be because that step that you took, those first steps that we all take, that step has never been taken before in the entirety mm. of human experience, human existence, human history. As a, so my one thing that I like to play with or understand more is you know, I like to come at it from a, like a not scientific standpoint, but I'm always interested in like the hows and the why. I always ask, mm. well, how, why? So I came across some information that the chance of being born human is one in 400 trillion to one in 400 quadrillion. So 400 trillion is 400 with 12 zeros after it. So I come across that. I'm like, all right, if that's the, if that's the chance of being born human, then we are all a miracle. It's, mm. it's miraculous that we are here, mm. not only living a human life, but you and I here having this conversation together. That's even more astronomical. Mm. And we're so... Do you know what else that... Mm. Sorry. Do you know what yeah. else that puts into perspective? Mm. How small our problems are. <laughs> and our understanding... It, Oh, it's a magnitude of scale, exactly. If we're mm. so close to it, we're so close to the fire, we're so close to the tree, everything is going to seem monumental. Mm. Everything is going to seem more intense, more traumatic, more important, more necessary. And what I've what I've experienced, and I feel you're there as well, where we pull back internally, give ourselves more internal space mm. to ask, to be open, to inquire to release attachment and to really embrace like that. That's your point about the shadow, like he or she or it, or they ain't going nowhere. That, that is with us. Mm -hmm. So we can continue to be at odds with it or let it, you know, run our lives to some extent, or we can, I feel like there's a certain aspect of either surrender or openness of embrace. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, you're come here, come here, shadow, like bring it in. Like, what wisdom do you have for me? What healing can we achieve together? Mm. What reconciliation can can we establish so we don't need to keep carrying with us all these trappings and programs and ways of being, to your point, that, that upon inspection might not even be ours. Yeah. Where did we get them from? And how important is it that we keep we keep repeating the, the loop or the thought or the behavior yeah. until we get to that place of like, I find it's kind of incremental though. It's you know, with awareness of, of patterns. It's like, Oh, I saw it. You know, there's that recognition mm -hmm. aspect, that recognition layer. And then it's like, Oh, there it is again. And that can be, I wonder why do I keep doing that? But if we're, if we're not in a, a place of presence, mm -hmm. we're always going to be, you know, the excuses. I never have enough time. I'm always pulled in too many directions. And if that's the belief that we carry, and if that's the reality that we experience, and that's going to be it. Mm. and even those thoughts shifts. those are just learned yeah. responses to things exactly. they could be coping mechanisms they could be um it could be fair it could be that's how you've always responded so that's how you always will respond and um, until you do something different you yeah. won't realize that hey i could change this pattern um, and then you don't know where that leads to as i yeah. said I, I didn't foresee any of this in that first step i took it was so important, yeah. but I didn't 
make it so important. It was just a, I wish you better days. Yeah. But had I known everything that would have followed, the pressure I would have felt in that moment to make sure I post it on time every day. <laughs> and so that's a great example of, the not knowing is sometimes the superpower, yeah. you know, because now when you have those demands, if you know where it's going to head to, it may influence your approach and yeah. um, commitment to your approach. Yeah. And even when you were in that, like really uh, an intense state of duress, you were in an intense state of, of limitation mm. from, from this is just me kind of, hearing and then re, re, reinterpreting it sounds like there was also a really powerful place of freedom yeah. because you were sharing with abandon you were sharing without you know it's without anything containing your inspiration or your you know that that, that those rockets you're launching mm, there was and no it, agenda or right. expectation and because of that there was no attachment there was only connection yeah yeah and i've tried to maintain that throughout i never lose sight of that i wish you better days although my brands and businesses have evolved yeah i i always remember those moments and um and i try to keep that same energy with the work i do now although i'm way more experienced now sure um i still want the connection to feel the same yeah. but just more knowledgeable to put the knowledge to partner with it now and that, well, it's that inception point, that that mm. that spark of life, that spark of creativity, where of course it's going to evolve and grow and change and transform. Mm. But there's always that 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 nucleus, that you know, almost a like a personal big bang, you might even consider. Mm. It's, this is it's this explosion. We don't know how it's going to shake out. We don't know how it's going to form and and be mm. in existence. But this was, you know, an, an expansive place even with a very limited expression in physical ways and kind of in ways of the world. But internally you were, you know, you, you were, you were blasting off. Mm. And again, when you're in it, you cannot see it yeah. for as it truly is. And so I was in the fire, you know, as you yeah. have described and um, by each stage, you cannot see it. You cannot see the magnitude of it. You cannot really appreciate it for what it is because you're in the game and it's not until you can start to slow down mm -hmm. and step outside of the rules and step outside of the, the scheduling and observe, yeah. you know, and so that process that I went through in that four years, I've done it again, but I've done it alongside now my work. So yeah. I create that same space. I still garden. I still, I've kept some of those valuable things and I brought it into the new Steve yeah. alongside the work because how, how beneficial they were for me when I wasn't being Steve White, Steve White, you know? And so, uh -huh. um, yeah, it's about just learning and applying what you learn to the new context of your next chapter. Yeah. Um, and finding beauty in that at every stage, yeah. despite, how hard it is <laughs> if you are going through it yeah it's about not looking for the positives in it that's right. very different just understanding that there is something happening in the uncomfortable place mm -hmm. that you don't understand that will become valuable at a later stage in your life yeah but you don't have to worry about that later stage because you're here now so find beauty Yep. in the space that you're in now until you get to the next now and then the next now and yeah that's really um contentment i think it is i think yeah. that's really um you have the hope that's why it was i wish you better days yeah it was um it was not a guarantee right i never promised anyone better days um but it would be my wish that if i could grant a wish to any everyone it would be that i wish them better days just something better than what their current experience is today and, and and those those better days are there for us to claim yeah if we are willing and open to it and i feel again going back to that kind of um 
you know, divine royalty, sovereign right. Mm. Like that is, those are our rights. Our, our right mm. is to create and cultivate peace within our own personal universe, mm. within our mind body, mm. find those balances. And sometimes life is asymmetrical. Like you've mm. experienced, like sometimes it is, sometimes we get into production and, you know, like my, my background is in is everything that you shared from web design, graphic design, mm. videography, photography, those all take practices as well. We're not just going mm. to open up, you know, a software design software and be able to create dynamic art immediately. It's like, mm. it's another learning. And can I just give a quick analogy on the design? Please. So you've worked in design. So, you know, there are several ways to change the exposure on a photograph. Mm -hmm. You can use the exposure meter. Mm -hmm. You can use brightness. You can use contrast. You can use curves. Mm -hmm. And the interesting part of all of them is they both have the black and they both have the white. And essentially, you're moving the highlights a little bit and you're bringing down the shadows or you're increasing the shadows and moving the highlights and both are moving towards each other. Very rarely do you, you bring up the highlights and bring up the shadows. Right. It's always a, a, a merging of the two and that's that gray. Yeah. But there, the most important part of what I was just saying is that there is more than one way to, to get to the gray or to yeah. embrace the gray. Um, and I think our own individual experiences are those different sliders and, um you keep tweaking and you keep tweaking until it's a shade of gray that is well balanced well exposed the highlights do what the shadows can't do and the shadows do what the highlights can't do and that's the beauty of black yeah. and white photography you know is whatever you don't see in the light the shadow will tell you yeah and whatever you can't see in the shadows the light is already giving you context on another part of the image that <laughs> is enough for you to to even use your imagination and color it yourself and that's yeah. what i try to do with my work leave you space to color it however you want to you know and so yeah i think that's a, a beautiful a beautiful perspective if you can incorporate that into your life yeah. in that you have different sliders and meters and it's up to you the shade that you want to see um but life will navigate you in different ways to get you're going to find a way to find contentment in the gray at some point yeah. and so i think it, the super nature part is okay do you now want your gray area or your gray zone to be overexposed or underexposed yeah or balanced and to your point, there are different seasons. Sometimes we're going to be a little overexposed. Sometimes mm -hmm. we're going to be a little underexposed. But having the awareness and recognition of those shifting spaces within the gray mm. can help bring us back to for what is for ourselves more of that mm. balance. Absolutely. Steve, I, I can't thank you enough. Um, I mean, really, there's so much, so much is here, and I, I can't wait for. Uh, <laughs> for everybody to be able to listen and, and hear and you know incorporate or assimilate in whatever way makes sense for them mm. but really yeah it's it's you, you really mentioned the present and that's literally the only place that can ever exist and mm. there it's present 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 so there, there's a lot of different we've been talking about a lot of different um kind of dynamic aspects of the present yeah and what i've experienced myself is the more time we practice getting to that place the more freedom we have to unpack what's not ours mm. embrace that shadow instead of trying to keep keep that shadow aspect away you know sit mm. with it like we would a friend treat it like we would a, an innocent child and that then i feel like is the is the inkwell that we can we can create our own new dynamic next mm. chapter from and I like to add as well that it's, it's not it's not about living miserably or just accepting that things are bad and right. that, you know it's not that it's more by doing this process that I've spoken about today that we've spoken about today you don't make the mistake that I made which was I never had time to really appreciate the good things mm. and never had time to really address the bad when you can find contentment in the gray them both get the credit and the time that they deserve. Yeah. 
Yeah. But for as long as you're trying to escape one, you're escaping the other. There it is. That's it. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. I love it. Finding finding that balance. Getting a little bit more comfortable in the unknown. Mm. Recognizing we are and we are more than we are. Mm -hmm. One step at a time. Coming back to those answers for ourselves. Connecting with that spark. And then continuing on our journey just once just like any other journey like the only way to get anywhere is one step at a time yeah, yeah. I, I feel like there's another aspect of that like getting comfortable with that because so often we want to sprint or we want to launch or we want to you know mm -hmm. we, we need to grind in order to launch instead of like no i'm just taking one step and sometimes mm -hmm. it's a step forward sometimes it's two steps forward one step back sometimes you do a little side step and to your point it's just getting more comfortable in that space of I don't know what my next step is necessarily exactly the direction it is, but mm. I'm ready for whatever it is. That, that and it might be stillness. A lot of power. Oh my gosh. That's it so might be power. stillness. Your next step may not be to do anything. It yes. may just be being still so that you can be moved. You know, it may not be something that you have to do. It may just be being. Maybe you've been doing for a very long time and now's the season for you to just be. And then from that, that space of being, the next step will be revealed to you, that inner inquiry that you speak about of, you know, the, your wisdom self. You now you learn. I had to be, my independence had to be taken away. I was mm -hmm. doing. Right. It was not, it was not until you, um, my independence was taken away and the doing part was taken away where that thing was birthed inside of me. Yeah. And then I could start to do again. But the thing that I was doing was very different after that. Right. Because you were I've doing it from a place of beingness. Doing from a place of being as opposed to doing from a place of needing. Yep. And so I've, that was 2008. Yeah. I've been doing and being that since ever since then. Yeah. Uh, you know, and so my encouragement to anyone today is that you've got to, you know, I think the first place to start would be to stop. <laughs> I'm doing silent clapping for anybody that's just yeah. listening. The Literally one of the most powerful start, things we can do. It's just stop yep. and almost imagine yourself just, I know I mean, this is going to make me sound old, but defragmenting, you know, defragment your Windows computer. Yep. And look at all the compartments of your life and say, okay, which ones am I going to partition to another hard drive? Which yeah. one am I going to close? And which one's using up the most processing speed? And uninstall and start to build from a place of nothing. And yeah. then you'll only be left with things that are valuable. Um, and maybe you then have the clarity to know what your first step will be. But if you try to take the old, busy, stressful routine and habits into this place of being you won't have the clarity to be able to hear or see what's next um and i think you can only know what's next by being present where you are a hundred percent in my opinion I, I i share that opinion and it's like our entire talk um kelly calls them truth bumps i've been getting full <laughs> body chills our entire <laughs> talk and so there's That's a lot true. of um there's a lot of, I feel like, um, universal wisdom in everything that you're sharing and everything you're doing. And I just can't thank you enough for for shining your light in the world and, and being the, the beacon and the helper and the uh, the being of service in the ways that you are. It's, it's spectacular. Thank you. I love what you, you guys do. Um, it's it's needed. Um, and I, I, I love, I recently watched your video. Um, and you were showing what our energy for food mm. looks like. I just thought it was so powerful. And if we could all see that every day, I wonder how it would make us behave differently. Right. If we could see someone's in that frantic energy, maybe we would show more love or empathy and yeah. patience towards their response to our question. Yeah. Or if we could see that someone was doing well and their force field was just all calm and balanced, maybe we'd choose better friendships because we'd want to be near that type of energy. And, and so just because we cannot see it, it doesn't mean it's not there. And yeah. so when I saw it, it made me think, hmm, 
I usually feel people's energies, but to see it would be really powerful. And oh my gosh. Yeah. And so I found that really inspirational. I think it's a oh. great um, perspective shift. And again, there's no right or wrong way. Um, 100%. There's only the gray. There it's it is. The gray. There it is. Well, Steve, thank you so much. Uh, this has been an absolute treasure and treat uh, for, for my morning anyway. I know we're on your, your evening. So thank you so much for, for the conversation. Thank you so much for connecting today uh, and for sharing your journey and for sharing your, your insight and all the opportunities and tools that exist that we can then implement and apply for ourselves on our own journeys. Thank you for having me. Yeah. I've enjoyed it um, and I hope it blesses someone. <laughs>